Hi, this is Todd Lamley, and welcome to my second dynamic update for my Cybex CCNA 7th edition study guide. I'm going to try and do these dynamic updates as often as possible or as needed, and this one is absolutely needed. I need to go over some new access list configurations for you, so we're going to spend some time on three different examples of looking at some business requirements and solving them with some extended access list test statements. So this will come directly out of my chapter 12 of my CCNA 7th edition study guide. So please read that chapter or follow along would, would be great, but if you read it, it would be even better. However, I just want to remind you to go out to my forum at lamley.com forward slash forum and either become a member or just look through the post. There is everything there is posted. There's a million questions, not really a million, but a lot of questions. And um, also I have my errata, all sorts of information, book updates. I also do dynamic updates there for my book as well. Uh, I keep that coming as more often than these video updates. Uh, but in these, I want to show configurations and more specific information. Uh, I can give you more detailed information using one of these videos. But don't forget that there's a lot of updates immediately right there on my site that I update almost every day. There's questions posted, you know, dozens and dozens, if not hundreds, constantly throughout the week. Also, my blog at lamley.com forward slash blog. But you can find all my websites from just going to lamley.com. And then from there, you can go to my training company, my blog, and my forum, and my Lamley Press with videos, etc. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, this dynamic update, I want to really, and the reason I wanted to do it was because of the access list. So I want to go through three different access lists, give you three different business requirements, and have us create and configure uh, test statements based on these business requirements. This first one's actually pretty simple. The other ones we're going to have to think a little bit harder, but on this one, not so much. We want to allow only host B to perform www on the admin server. No one else can do it. Okay, so if that's been the case, let's take a look. Let's go to a router and let's just do that first line. <clears throat> pretty simple configuration. Config T. Now we know we need to use an extended access list, and we're going to use a numbered access list. So access list extended, so 100 to 199, any number. Um, let's see, uh, permit host B, but before we say host B, we have to choose the protocol field network layer header. And the four most common that can be used here is IP, ICMP, TCP, or UDP. Those are the four most common, but many others can be used, up to 255 variables actually. Um, so if I said IP or ICMP, I'm saying at the network layer and can then only filter on source and destination. Uh, if I want to filter on upper layer port, then I have to use a transport layer protocol here, TCP or UDP. Since we're doing WWW or filtering on WWW port 80, then we know that that goes through TCP. So we're going to type TCP here. Uh, I must know this. If I don't understand what port 80 uses, then we must go back to chapter 3 and read that where I detail that information out. Access 101, permit TCP data from host B. Going specifically to host server 10, 10, 10, 1, equal to port 80. Okay, so now only host B can perform www on the admin server. Now we don't want anyone else to do it, so in this case I need to create a deny statement. Access list 101, deny TCP data from any source going to the admin server. Specifically, we'll be very specific with host command. Uh, equal to port 80. So now only host B can perform www port 80. I can also type in HTTP either way on the admin server. Everyone else is denied. But then it says all other traffic is allowed. So only host B can perform it right here. Perform www. All other traffic is allowed. So we permit, deny, and then we're going to permit all other traffic. Access list 101. Permit. Stay at the network layer. So we're going to permit the whole IP protocol suite is now permitted any source, any destination. So let's take a look at this. Oops. Show access list, full command. Show IP access, uh, the extended access list 101. Permit in TCP data from host B, and I made a typo there. So this is a very good reason that we verify here. So here's what I'm going to do. Here's how you fix this. No access list 101. 
So that's how you fix that when you're using a numbered access list. So let's try this again. <laughs> All right, so I wonder if any of you saw that. So it's very important that we verify that we don't make a typo. So there we go. I'm going to permit that one. Notice I'm just doing up arrows. Uh, we don't want any any yet. We want to deny everyone else first. And then I want to permit everybody else. Make sure these are, it's a very important you put these in in the correct order. Because if I was deny TCP from any host, uh, any source going to admin server, if that was my first line, then host B would never be able to do HTTP here. So we're permitting host B doing HTTP, <laughs> denying everyone else, and then permitting all other traffic. Let's try to verify that again. Show access lists. Okay, permit TCP host. Again, this is why we verify. Uh, uh, host B going to admin server equal to port 80. And notice it changed it to www. Deny TCP traffic from any source going to host 10.10.10.1 10, 10, 10, equal to port 80. And then permit IP any any. Now we're not done because this hasn't done anything until we apply it to an interface. Would you agree? In this case, um, if we did it in here on F00, then anyone from the outside network can get in. And it doesn't say allow anyone from the outside network to do it. It says only host B to <clears throat> do port 80 on admin. Okay, so if that's the case, then we need to do it out on F00. All right, so one more thing, we're done here. Access group 101, out. And we need to always verify, so I'd, I seem to make a lot of typos. And the way to do it, show IP interface um, F01. Uh, now, of course, show run would give us all this information, but we want to, <clears throat> Let me do a show run here because I don't have that interface up. But show IP interface will give us information as well. So here's our access list, access list 101. Permit, deny permit. And then we can see on F01, let me find it. IP access group 101 out. The interface is shut down so it didn't give me all the information. So I'll have to enable that to make this to work, obviously. All right, let's take a look at our next access list. I'm going to go ahead and delete this one so we can do more access lists. No access list, the second time we did this. No access 101. So again, we can verify that. It's gone. Show access this. Nothing there. Good. All right, let's take a look at our next business requirements. Now we have somewhat of the same network here. Actually, I have the same network. But this is going to, again, have the same line. Allow host B to perform port 80 on the admin server. Well, it seems like our first line is going to be the same, that's for sure. But let's read the next few lines. No other traffic to the admin server is allowed, not from the sales land or the outside network. It doesn't say just port 80, it says no other traffic, period. So it seems to me that we have a permit, a deny again, and then all hosts from all networks need to access the web server. So we're not gonna do a permit IP any any as like in the last one to end it with, we're gonna be very succinct. So again, it looks like we have a permit, a deny and a permit, but they're more succinct than the last one. Let's go ahead and build this again. All right, so first, we're going to do the first line the same, config T. Maybe I can do this without a typo this time. Access list 101, permit, host B, 192. So host 192.168.10.2. Oops, forgot, to, forgot a couple things here, didn't I? TCP, host 192.168.10.2, go into host 10.10.10.1, equal to 80. Okay. Uh, no other traffic to the admin server is allowed, not from the sales on or outside network. So we're going to do this a little bit different. This is 101. Gosh, lots of typos today. Deny. Now, we're going to stop all traffic, not just TCP traffic. So I'm going to stay at the network layer and deny the TCP IP suite. So the whole IP suite, any source to the admin server, going to host 10, 10, 10, 1. Okay, so this line here says deny any TCP IP traffic going from any source going to 10, 10, 10, 1. Okay, so that is much different than what we did in the last one. Now, all hosts from all networks need to access the web server. So again, we're going to do a permit. And again, it says all, it doesn't specifically say TCP or anything. So we're going to take, say, the IP protocol suite from any source going to the web server, which is host 10, 10, 10, 3. 
So we had a permit, a deny, and a permit, but they were much different than the last one. So let's take a look. I'm going to do a show run on this one. There it is. So I'll allow host B to perform HTTP on the admin server. Access 101 permit TCP data from host B going to the admin server equal to www. No other traffic to the admin server is allowed, not from the sales land or the outside network. They were, they were very succinct here. I wrote very succinctly that no traffic can go to the sales land but host B and do www. So deny IP protocol suite from any source going to 10, 10, 10, 1. And then all hosts from all networks need to access the web server specifically. Permit IP going to any source, coming from any source, going to host 10, 10, 10, 3. <clears throat> and that's it. It doesn't say all of the traffic is permitted after that. So those are our three lines. Very succinct here. But again, it does nothing until we apply this to an interface, does it? And we're going to apply it in the same place. Not inside here, but outbound here. So it covers all networks trying to go to this server. So I'm going to go to interface F01. Lots of typos today. It's a typo day. Interface F01, IP access group 101 out. And that'll solve this. Now, we should do a copy run start. Obviously, that's what you would do. But in this case, I want to delete this. No access list 101. Because we have a third one we want to take a look at. So let me move this over. And again, I would rewind these and, and watch both of these again. Let's take a look at the third one. So I would go through these over and over again. As a matter of fact, maybe set up Packet Tracer, GNS3, whatever you have, and go through these labs. All right, this one says allow host C to perform only HTTP on the admin server. Other access from host C to the admin should be blocked. So this isn't blocking everyone else now. We're only blocking host C. All hosts from all networks need to access the web server. So this is going to be different. Again, we're going to do permit, deny, permit again, it looks like. But we're, our permit is the, always this. Our first permit is the same on all three of these. Our second deny is different on each one, and our and our third line, our permit statement is different on each one. So let's go ahead and take a look and start this again. Okay. So I can almost up arrow on this one, couldn't I? One hundred and one permit TCP from host one hundred and ninety two one hundred and sixty eight dot ten three. Going specifically to host 10.10.10.1 equal to 80. That line's the same on all three of these. We're allowing either different hosts, A, B, or C, going to a server and do an HTTP. That's pretty simple. It's the second denied statement that's different on each one of them. Access list 101. Deny TCP data. Um, no, it says all other data. So deny IP. Host C, though. So we'll be succinct. Deny any data from host, any pack, any IP protocol suite packets from host C going to the admin server. So this is much different than what we had last time. We're specifically denying anything from the IP protocol suite from host C right here going to the admin server. So the, all they can do is HTTP on here. Now, all hosts from all networks need to access the web server. So that's I think that's the same as our last one. Access list, permit, access 101. Again, typo day. Permit <clears throat> IP, because all hosts from all networks need to access the web server. It doesn't say specifically HTTP or anything. So we'll just say the IP protocol suite can get to the web server from any source going to host 10, 10, 10, 3. And again, we'll place it out of F01, not in here, because we have to take more than one inbound network and not let it to go out. IP access group 101 out. And that'll do it for our three access lists that I wanted to go over with you. Uh, make sure and study these. Read my chapter 12. Use this as a study tool. Build this in Packet Tracer GNS3 and go through these labs. Make sure you understand them completely. All three of these had a permit, deny, permit. They were all three. The first line was always the same. The second two lines were always different. Make sure you understand your switch verification commands. Also, in the last NEC update, I did switch verification commands for trunk ports, didn't I? In this case, it was port security. So obviously, your switch uh, verification commands are important. Okay, until next time, please study hard, and I'll see you out on my forum.